Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good and you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, okay. So I will just quickly uh, buzz through my thing until you tell me I can screen share. You can screen share so long so that they can see um they're in the right class. I'm going to start admitting the people now because I've put them oh. all in a waiting room just till you get in. Okay. And then we'll go live and start. But, but, but when I click on screen, screen share, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. That's impossible because I didn't select anything like that. That's so weird. Um, Let me just check. Okay, try again now. Okay. Um,
everyone. It's so uh, good to see you. I'm just waiting another minute or two and then we will start. Really nice to see you all there today. One more minute to go. I'm busy looking at the um, chat box. So I see names and every so often I see your camera on. The host hasn't put it off yet. Okay, are we ready to start everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to your grade six English first additional language lesson and welcome to the STEM Lockdown Digital School. It's really so nice to have you back today. So, um, oh, let me see if I can get this moving now. There we go. My name's Fiona Beale and I am your grade six first additional language teacher for today. Hello. Um, we're back using Zoom now, so at certain times I'll be able to ask you um, to raise your hand if you want to answer, so I'm really, really pleased about that. And also I can now see the chat box, so if you write answers in the chat box every now and then I can see what you are writing, which will be awesome. So let's get going with today's lesson. So what are we going to do today in our listening and speaking lesson? We're going to still be working from week three and four of the CAPS curriculum for listening and speaking. But our topic today is no longer endangered animals, it's now birds. So, oops, we're going to watch a video on birds. Um, let me just, uh, Mel, I keep seeing this waiting room, uh, uh, the waiting room thing coming up. Is that yeah, correct? Hello, that's fine. So, okay. So, Miss, I click on see waiting room or what? No, I'm controlling that from us, so don't worry about it. Okay, because it's kind of on the screen and I'm not sure sort of takes up some of the place where I'm reading from. Okay, so. Okay, Doug. Right, so sorry, everybody. So you're going to look at a picture. Okay. Here's a result from search. Oh, sorry, let me just. Okay, so I'm going to start again. Okay, today this is what we're going to do. We're working from week three and four of the CAPS curriculum and we will be starting by looking at a picture of a bird and describing it. Then we're going to watch a video on birds and take notes. We'll take part in a discussion about birds and we'll play a language game on the topic of birds. Right. We'll listen to descriptions of different birds and we'll identify them. We'll identify similarities and differences in birds. We'll follow instructions, draw and label a bird, and identify different parts of the body of a bird. And then we'll also look at vocabulary. So it's important for you to know more or less where we're going in this lesson and um, so that you know that it's a busy lesson and we're going to work really hard. Okay, so look at this beautiful bird. Isn't it gorgeous? Now, how would you describe that bird? How would you describe that bird? If I had to say to you, okay, 
give me a description of this bird. What would you say? Would anyone like to raise their hands? Iwandle, Iwandle has raised his hand. Let's see what Iwandle says. Uh, Ma'am, I would say it's a bird that have black and yellow and red feather and a colorful mouth. Very good, Iyanli. That's excellent. Excellent. Right. So, Iyanli gave a good description there. Let's give you some um, words now. Um, you can talk about its coloring, um, which Iyanli did. You can mention that unusual beak, isn't it? It looks like it's just been sewed on with some, or stuck on with some black glue, doesn't it? And it's huge. And we could mention those claws. Look at those claws with their nails. Wow, gripping the, gripping the, the wood. It's brightly colored, but not all over, just at the front. And um, it's got a yellow breast and black feathers. So if you look at this bird, um, where do you think this picture's taken? It looks at, as though it's some kind of a cage or, or maybe a zoo or something like that. This bird is called a toucan. And um, I'm not sure if you find them here in South Africa, uh, but they are certainly very beautiful. So today in our lesson, <clears throat> we're going to practice giving um, descriptions of birds, mentioning um, things that we see, we hear, we touch, we taste, and we, our five senses, using our five senses. So let's get on with the lesson now and watch a video. So during this video, I'd like you to take note of which birds are mentioned, some of the big vocabulary words. We're going to be using some of these ideas in our lesson. Hello everybody, in this video we're going to learn about our friends, the birds. They're so diverse and there are so many colors and shapes, it's fun to learn about them. For example, this tiny little hummingbird doesn't look anything like this huge ostrich. And these penguins don't look much like this peacock with its large fan-shaped tail. Well, they may not look alike, but they're all birds and have many things in common. Birds are oviparous, which as you know, means that they reproduce by laying eggs. The females lay the eggs in nests, in the rocks or on the ground, and with the heat of their bodies, they incubate the eggs until the little chicks hatch. Birds don't have teeth, they have beaks or bills, and these can be very different depending on what that species of bird feeds on. They breathe with their lungs that are connected to bags full of air called air sacs and these help birds to fly. Also, nature, which is very clever, has made their bones hollow so they weigh very little and because of this it's much easier for them to fly. The skin of birds is covered with feathers these protect them from the cold and heat. Birds have four limbs. The back ones are legs and the front ones are wings. <coughs> Together, the wings and feathers are essential for them to be able to fly. And in some cases, so they can swim. Birds are terrestrial and most of them can fly. Can you think of any birds that can't fly? That's right. Penguins and ostriches are two species of birds that cannot fly. Birds have four types of feathers. Those that cover the whole body. Flight feathers in the wings that help them to fly. Down feathers which cover the chest and belly and maintain the body at a constant temperature and tail feathers that help guide the bird's body like a rudder on a boat. 
Birds can be classified into several groups according to what they eat. Herbivores feed on plants and grasses. Their beaks are short and strong and can crush seeds and grains. When they only eat grains, they're called granivores. Carnivorous birds hunt and eat other animals. Using their strong, curved beaks, Within the group of carnivores, there are insectivores that only eat insects and piscivores that only feed on fish. These birds have pointed beaks that are long and sharp to help them catch the fish. Remember, birds that eat fish are called piscivorous. The last group Omnivorous birds includes pigeons and hens, and they eat almost anything. So remember, birds are oviparous, which means they reproduce by laying eggs. Their mouths are beaks or bills, and they breathe with their lungs. Their skin is covered with feathers, and depending on the food they eat, they can be herbivorous, carnivorous, or omnivorous. So. Now you know a lot more about birds. Goodbye everybody and don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning. Okay, that was a very interesting video on birds, wasn't it? I certainly learned quite a lot of things about birds. Let's discuss what we learned about birds, but obviously I'm not going to be able to hear you, but you can write in the chat box or you can just call out your answer. Okay, so first of all, which bird did you like the most in that video? Was there a bird that you liked the most? I think I liked the, um, that cute little hummingbird. Did you know that hummingbirds can fly backwards? What did you like? Some people are saying falcon. I, was there a falcon in that video? There might have been. Right, so someone else likes a hummingbird. Good. Okay, number two. Can you name any of the other birds in the video? Which other birds did they mention by name? Or, or which birds did you recognize? Penguin. Okay, I noticed a penguin and I noticed a hummingbird. Was there another one that you'd, you noticed? Quite a big bird. Ostrich, somebody's got it and somebody put there the eagle. Yes, excellent. Right, can you name, um, uh, what do birds eat? Did you notice how they group the birds according to how, what they eat? Um, what do birds eat? What seeds for granivores, yes. Meat for carnivores, fish for piscivores, leaves and um, leaves and gray, uh, leaves and plants. Yes, for herbivores. Very good. And there was one name they mentioned. I think the chicken that eats anything. Can you remember what that's called? A chicken. Uh, it eats anything. It eats whatever you give it. What's what is the name given to that type of uh, eating? Omnivore, somebody put it. Excellent, excellent. Good. Can you name five parts of a bird's body that were shown in the video? Which five parts can you name? What did you notice? Um, wings, yes. What about uh, beak? Yes, beak. Um, In fact, they mentioned four types of wing. Wasn't that interesting? Talons, tail feathers, lungs. Very good. Okay. I'm sure we've got more than five by now. That's excellent. And um, they mentioned that uh, birds have got hollow bones and they've got these air sacs attached to the lungs. What is, 
what do those two things have to do with birds and flying? What's the importance of hollow bones? What do hollow bones do for birds that helps them to fly? Our bones aren't, are, are our bones hollow, I wonder? No, I don't think so. Right, so hollow, hollow bones makes birds very, very light so that they can fly easily. And the air sacs, somebody put there that um, makes them very light, very good. And the air sacs are attached to the lungs so that they can um, breathe. Uh, they've got extra air for flying up, uh, flying. So they actually created them in amazing ways. Well, we know a lot about birds now. I won't take any raised hands at the moment because we're going to go on now with our, um, our lesson. We're going to play a language game quickly, also based on what you saw in the video. Okay, so I want you to match the words in the left column with their meanings in the right column. These are the words oviparous. Remember that word oviparous. Terrestrial. Do you remember that word? Terrestrial. Incubate. These are all big words <clears throat> that were mentioned in the video. Piscivorous. Warm blooded. And here are the meanings. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maintain a constant body temperature. A. Eh? B is likes to fish, likes to eat fish, sorry. C produces young by laying eggs. D sits on eggs so that they hatch. And E, a type of bird that stays primarily on the ground. Can you match um, the numbers with the letters? So just put your answers like one, whatever, two, whatever. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Or busy matching the words with their meanings. Okay, got that. So let's look at the answers. A viparous is one C, produces young by laying eggs. Good. Terrestrial. E, a type of bird that stays mainly, primarily on the ground. Three, D, sits on eggs so that incubates, sits on eggs so that they hatch. Four, piscivorous. B, likes to eat fish. Five, warm-blooded maintains a constant body temperature. How did you do? Did you get all those correct? Awesome, awesome. So we've learned a few big words today about birds. Now today, um, I'm going to uh, read some descriptions of seven birds that are found in South Africa. And I want you to guess what they are. So remember that this week in CAPS is all about descriptions and information text. So today's lesson is, is concentrating on descriptions. Are you ready? Now we're going to do our flow chart again so that you can take notes. So I want you to write down birds one to seven on your page. And as I read it, the, read the description, I want you to try and figure out the name of the bird and the category that it falls into for eating. Is it a carnivore or a piscivore or a granivore, an omnivore, herbivore? Okay, so you've got to listen out for those details. Have you got your, have you got your um, flow chart written? Have you got your flow chart? Down, you're nearly finished. 
Right, so let's get started. So the birds are going to describe themselves and I want you to guess what they are, okay? So what am I? What am I? I have a compact body with a large head and a short neck. My beak is short, strong and curved. The last, the two parts of my beak are very strong and are used to break fruit and seeds. I'm a granny boar. I'm brightly colored and all my species is multicolored. I make a great pet because I can be trained to talk. I can also live for a long time, more than 50 years. What am I? Can anyone guess? I'm going to show, I see some answers there. I'm going to show you a picture. Right, the second bird. What am I? I am a large, powerfully built bird with a heavy head and beak. Some people call me a bird of prey, but I prefer to call myself a carnivore. I eat meat and I do not eat any type of plant matter. Sometimes I eat small animals, including rats, mice, rabbits, squirrels, snakes and fish, lizards, birds, and more. Don't worry, I don't eat people. I have very good eyes. My eyes are eight to, to 10 times better than your eyes. Did you know that? And I've got a very large hooked beak for ripping flesh off my prey. I've got strong muscular legs and powerful talons. What am I? Okay, I see some answers there in the chat box. There's a description. Notice I'm not giving the names yet. But our third bird. I am a large, colorful pheasant. I'm blue and green, but I have an iridescent tail. Do you know that word? Iridescent, I think it's pronounced. It means luminous when looked at from different angles. I'm very proud of my tail feathers because they spread out in a distinctive train that is more than 60% of my total body length. And they seem to have eyes on them in markings of blue, gold, red, and other colors. People say I shouldn't look so beautiful because I'm a male, but I love the way I look. I'm a terrestrial bird and I don't like flying. I'm also an omnivore. I eat plants, fruit, seeds, flower petals, ants, ticks, insects, locust, and bread, and other scraps in the garden and forests. What am I? I see a lot of guesses there. There's a picture. And our fourth bird, I have a large head, a short neck, and an elongated body. I'm usually black and white in color. My tail is short, stiff, and wedge-shaped. My legs and webbed feet are set far back on my body, which allows me to walk upright, just like you. Actually, I don't walk, I waddle. I am terrestrial, I can't fly at all, and I'm a piscivore. I mostly eat fish and other sea creatures. Don't try and sneak up on me. I have excellent sight and hearing. What am I? I see some people writing answers there. Great. Next bird. This is bird number five. You won't see much of me during the day because I am a nocturnal bird. By the way, I am very wise. I think I should actually be king of the birds. What do I look like? Well, I have feathered talons, a large head with a short hooked beak, large eyes set forward, and a fluffy plumage. A plumage is the word 
for a covering of feathers. My plumage allows me to fly noiselessly. I'm a carnivore. I like to eat insects, small mammals like hares and rabbits, and small birds. What am I? Here's a picture. See the answers there? Okay, bird number six. I am the world's largest bird. I'm terrestrial and I don't fly. I have long legs and a long neck that protrudes from my round body. Males have bold black and white coloring that they use to attract females. I am the only bird that has two toes on each foot. I'm an omnivore. I also have the largest eyes of all the land mammals. So I eat vegetation and meat. Although I prefer plants, especially roots, seeds and leaves, I also eat locusts, lizards, snakes and rodents. What am I? And I see a lot of answers there. Great. And our last bird, bird seven. I am a large bird with a long neck, stick-like legs and pink or reddish feathers. I've got webbed pink feet with three toes. I have a large hooked bill with a black tip that is curved down. I think I'm very graceful. I'm an omnivore. I like to wade in the water looking for food to eat. If you want to be pink like me, you must eat some of the things I eat. Small bits of algae, plant material, insects, brine, shrimp, and other foods. Yes, I'm an omnivore. By the way, I also fly. I'm a good flyer. What am I? I see lots of people guessing the answer. Okay, so let's see if you got the right answers. Bird one, parrot. Bird two, eagle. Bird three, peacock. Bird four, penguin. Bird five, owl. Bird six, ostrich. Bird seven, flamingo. I'm sure you got all those right, hey? Well done. And what about the category it falls into for eating? The parrot likes grain, granivore. Eagles like meat, carnivore. Peacocks eat anything, omnivore. Penguins love seafood, fish, piscivore. Owl likes meat, carnivore. Ostrich likes plant, plants. So some people say the ostrich is a herbivore and others say it's an omnivore because it also eats other little insecty creatures. And a flamingo is an omnivore. Right. How did you do? Good. Awesome. Let's just show you the names again. The parrot, the eagle, the peacock. There's the peacock. Penguin, owl, ostrich, and flamingo. Okay, so I've taken one of these birds and um, I would like you to describe it orally. So we've, we've just described, we've just mentioned it in the description, but um, I'm going to give you a template for describing this time. I'm going to ask you to say its name and then to say which group it falls under for its eating habits. I'd like you then to describe it, mentioning the body parts, using adjectives and the five senses, and what you like about it. Oops, sorry. Would anybody like to give it a go using the, that template? Would you like to raise your hand and try and describe this bird for me? 
saying its name, what group it falls under, and just describing it. Oh, I see a raised hand, Kyra. <clears throat> That's so awesome. Should we take Kyra, please, Mel? It's a, it's a pink, it's a flamingo. Yes. Um, it is a, um, an omnivore. It, it, it has a big body, um, and it's pink and it can stand on one leg. Very good. I like it. I like it. I like about it because it is pink. Excellent. Well done. Well done. That's excellent. Should we take someone else? No? Hello. Abby? Oh, uh, beautiful white and pink fur, very long legs, a long yellow beak, and beautiful, at, uh, very good at flying. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Should we have one more? Yeah. Who are we going to have this time? I'm a new to Adele. I don't know if she lowered her hand though. Adele, do you want to have a go? Okay, well, maybe we should go on then at to our next part of our lesson. But thank you for those that um, spoke. That was excellent. <clears throat> well done. You noticed our template now. It's an important template for describing. And we'll use it again just now. So now we're going to take that eagle that we saw apart and draw it. So you're ready to draw your eagle. And then afterwards, we're going to label the eagle. <clears throat> so... Let's get started. Have you got a nice blank piece of paper to draw an eagle? Let's go. What can that part be? That little part there. Draw that part, please. And it was, an, it was the beak, right. Draw the next part, which includes part of the head. Got that? Now let's go on and start doing parts of the wind and parts of the outline. Got that, good. Let's finish off those feathers and that go on down to the legs. Good. Now let's uh, finish off that wing feather and add some of the feathers that cover the legs. Good. Let's go on and start drawing those feet at the bottom. And now let's finish those toes and claws, talons, and the tail feathers. And our final part of the drawing, we're going to do the, the eye and we're going to separate the beak from top from the bottom and add nails onto the 
onto the claws. Right, and there you have your beautiful eagle. Did everyone get that done? Excellent, excellent. So let's go on and um, label. Label your drawing. So now I'm going to show you some of the words and you'll notice that I've put adjectives in, but you don't have to use adjectives when you label your bird. I just want to show you how adjectives make words come alive. So strong talons, a hooked beak, sharp eyes, long wings, beautiful feathers, strong limbs. See if you can label your drawing. Right, you're all done. We got those down. Talons, beak, eyes, wings, feathers, limbs. Another word for legs, limbs. Let's check. Now, why doesn't this? Oh, sorry. Trying to make this go on. Okay, here the answers are the beak, the wings, the limbs, the talons, the feathers, the eyes. How did you do? Did you get all the different parts of the eagle? Excellent. Excellent. Um, now, what I want us to do now is to describe this bird, the eagle. And I want you to mention its name. Mention what group it falls under for its eating habits. And describe it, mention its body parts, use adjectives and the five sentences, and what you like about it. So think about that now for a minute or two, and how you're going to describe it. So now I've got Grandpa here again and he says that he wants to go he wants to describe this bird okay but i have to tell you that grandpa was sleeping right he was sleeping so he might not get it right okay okay so what do you say grandpa okay grandpa says that this is a hummingbird no it's not a hummingbird that's an eagle Oh, and he says it, it's a granivore. This bird is a granivore. No, that's not right. It's a carnivore. Mention the body parts. Uh, he says got very strong wings, a yellow beak. Well, they're not all yellow. They're not all yellow. And it's got, um, it's got tail, pretty tail feathers. And um, it's got very sharp talons and it's that beak and it's got very sharp eyes well that's that's good that's very good good description and if grandpa says what oh he says if he had to touch the feathers they would be very soft he thinks they'd be very soft and if you had to touch the beak it would bite you or oh, that's you're probably right there grandpa and he said it, it sings. No, I don't think that's right. I don't think an eagle sings. So i don't not sure what sound it makes, but it would be interesting to touch those feathers, wouldn't it? And what do you like about it? You like it because it's so tame. 
No, eagle is not tame. They are very, they're quite vicious birds. They can be tamed. They can be tamed by owners, I suppose. But, um, uh, yeah. Anyway, I would like you to work out a description of this. And... Now you'll see that I've put there for homework, describe the eagle, because I would really love you to, it's so easy to just describe it using Flipgrid. Um, so um, I'd like to give you homework to describe the eagle using Flipgrid. And I'll just explain to you how to use Flipgrid. Thank you to those that have been using it, because then I can see you and listen to you and uh, feel like you're in my class, if you know what I mean. So it's very simple to, to use Flipgrid. All you do is you just type Flipgrid into your browser and it brings up Flipgrid and you scroll down till you get this part here like that that says enter a flip code. And there's the flip code, 27C95C7F. Just write that down on your, in your book. 27C95C7F. Then you'll see a big plus sign and all you do is click on that plus and you start talking and um, and then it means I can hear what you have to say about your description. Think you could do that? I would love it. So here's the code again 27C95C7F. Right, so now we are going to start finishing off our lesson because our time is nearly up. It is up actually. So let's just go over what we learned today. Remember it was mainly about descriptions. So it was our listening and speaking lesson and from week three and four of the CAPS curriculum. You looked at a picture of a bird to start off with and described it. Then you watched a video on birds and you took notes. After that, you, we, went, we had a discussion about birds from the video. We played a language game with some of the words that we learned. And we listened to descriptions of seven different birds and identified them. After that, we looked at similarities and differences to do with the birds. And we followed instructions and we drew and labeled a bird. We identified different parts of the body of the eagle that we drew. And then we looked at the vocabulary uh, for labeling. So we had a really full lesson today. And thank you so much for coming. I really do appreciate that. Here's some activities for you to try this week. Practice describing words, birds, using the method you learnt about today. Think about making a bird feeder, if you've got time, for some of the birds in your area. And if you want to draw different types of animal, there is a, um, this website. Um, well, it shows you how to draw different types of animals. And if you want to watch that video again, I've put the link there. This PowerPoint is available on the Africa Teen Geeks website. Um, I saw somebody raise their hand, Abu, Abu, did he want to say something, Abu? Okay, now I'd like to invite you, somebody wants to say something for one final thing? Anybody want to say something? Okay, so I'd like it to invite you to the next lesson tomorrow at 11. Our times have changed, as you know, from 10, now we're at 11. And we're doing a reading lesson tomorrow. So I'm hoping you'll be coming to that. 
And in our lesson tomorrow, we'll be reading and summarizing information. So I hope to see you there. Thank you all so much for coming today and for writing in the comment box and for participating. I look forward to listening to some of you on Flipgrid and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.